Hey guys, welcome back to another video from the Decision Desk HQ YouTube channel. My name is Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at DDHQ, here to summarize all of the action from Election Night 2023. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Decision Desk HQ for real time election updates, as well as insightful data driven analysis. Alrighty, starting with probably the most high profile election of the night the race for Kentucky governor. Incumbent Democrat Andy Bashir defeated Republican Attorney General Daniel Cameron and is currently on pace to win by around 5%, a significantly higher margin than when he was first elected in 2019 by less than half a percent. Now after Bashir led in polls by comfortable margins throughout the cycle, three polls released in the last two weeks of the campaign showed a race within the margin of error, giving many Republicans a newfound sense of optimism here. In national elections, Kentucky has been reliably Republican, and Trump won the state by nearly 26 points in 2020. However, Bashir remained one of the most popular Democratic governors in the entire country, especially among Trump voters, and he stood way ahead of Cameron in fundraising. Ultimately, Bashir becomes yet another data point to support the argument that unseating an incumbent governor is one of the most difficult things to do in politics. As I discussed in a short video on this channel last night, we called the race for Bashir due to a multitude of factors. Foremost among these was his consistent outperformance relative to his 2019 election results in the counties where a significant portion of the vote had been tallied. At the time of the race call, 37 counties had reported at least 75% of their expected vote, out of 120 in the state, with 15 counties fully completed. Counties like Breathitt and Lee, which had leaned towards Trump nationally, saw Bashir overperform by significant margins, surpassing anticipated performance in traditionally GOP-leaning areas in central Kentucky. Additionally, the results of absentee and early voting in several counties in western Kentucky were exceptionally strong for Bashir, while he also appeared to maintain his usual strength in Democratic urban areas, putting him in a solid position for victory. Next up, in the state of Ohio, voters passed Issue 1 to amend the state's constitution to protect the right to an abortion through fetal viability, as well as Issue 2 which legalized recreational marijuana for people 21 and older. Perhaps the night's biggest surprise though, Issue 2 passed by a larger margin than Issue 1, which had received significantly more attention and support from local Democrats as well as left-leaning organizations. Nevertheless, Ohio has become the 24th state to legalize marijuana. At the time of recording this video, with more than 99% of the estimated vote in, Issue 2 has passed by a 13.5 point margin, while Issue 1 trails close behind by 12.5 points. Both amendments passed by a comfortable majority, as it became clear early on in the night that Democrats had a turnout advantage in Ohio largely due to the typical high turnout rates among highly engaged and highly educated voters who tend to be left-leaning and make up a disproportionate share of the electorate in off-year elections, and who have been turning out at even higher rates following the Supreme Court's reversal of Roe v. Wade. Shifting over to the state of Mississippi though, where the main action was in the governor's race, Incumbent Republican Tate Reeves is projected to have defeated his Democratic challenger, Brandon Presley, by a remarkably similar margin to when he was first elected in 2019. With more than 99% of the estimated vote in, Reeves holds 51.6% to Presley's 47.05%, for a margin of roughly 4.6%. Now, given the strong Republican lean of Mississippi, as well as the fact that Reeves had led in most polls by a considerable margin, once our decision desk started analyzing early returns, it became clear that the question would not be whether Reeves would lose to Presley, but whether Presley and the third party candidate in the race would pull the incumbent governor below 50%. Mississippi is a runoff state where if a statewide candidate does not receive at least 50% of the vote, the top two candidates would simply advance to a runoff election scheduled for a later date. 
And with that in mind, initial data points seem to suggest that Reeves would have little trouble staying above 50%. Our pre-election analysis indicated that Presley would need to overperform by a wide margin in his home areas in northeast Mississippi, such as Tupelo, Oxford, and Starkville. However, early results coming in from Lee County, encompassing the Tupelo metro area, had Presley barely hitting his vocal projection. That said, our call was delayed due to Hines County, home to the state capital of Jackson, and Democrats' biggest voter base, where ballot shortages led a state court to order that all precincts remain open another hour beyond the 8 p.m. poll closing. The assumption, of course, was that the margin, which hovered around 12 to 14 points then, would narrow with results out of Hines County. But the question was by how much? Ultimately, our team concluded that Reeves would survive above 50%. Finally, the fight for control in the Virginia state legislature was, for obvious reasons, the most complex call of the night, as rather than just calling one race, we needed to project at least 21 seats in the Senate and 51 seats in the House for either party. The DDHQ race call team approached each race individually, ensuring that all necessary races were callable before calling chamber control. We closely tracked updates on the Virginia Secretary of State's website as the vote came in, following the vote left in each race. Since same-day registration votes are categorized as provisionals in Virginia after not being released on election night, it's important to consider the outstanding vote. And since same-day registration ballots tend to lean towards Democrats, it was easier to call races for Democrats on election night. That is all though for this Decision Desk HQ video, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the video down below if you did indeed like it, and subscribe while you're at it if you haven't already. Also check out more content from our channel here, and we'll catch you next time.